what is going on guys welcome back to another chess lesson and in this video we are going to be going over the berlin defense and more specifically the berlin wall so this arises after the typical roy lopez which is pawn to e4 pawn to e5 knight to f3 knight to c6 bishop to b5 now black has a choice actually several different choices of how they can defend how they can respond but in this line which is the berlin defense is signified by the move knight to f6. Now, of course, this is an excellent move for black, not only because of this specific line, but also just because they're developing a knight towards the center, controlling a central square, and also attacking white's pawn on e4. So now, white can defend in a lot of different ways. What they can do is they can develop a knight to c3, they can move their bishop back, they can move a pawn to d3. All of these are going to defend this pawn on e4, However, believe it or not, white's most common maneuver in this position is just the castle, allowing black the option of taking this pawn right here. Now in this line, what black does is they do indeed choose to capture on e4. So this is called the Berlin endgame. And just as a side note, this position has a very high percentage of a draw. So if you are black and you need to play for the win, maybe you're in a tournament or something, you probably do not want to choose this line because of its high drawing percentage. But, you know, just something to keep in mind. And now, as white's response, what they want to do is play the move d4. So what this does is essentially white's attempt to rip open the center. They're going to rip open the e-file by any means necessary and that's the main goal what they're trying to accomplish with this move however what black is going to do is they have a very nice move and that is taking their knight that's on e4 and moving it to d6 so this does two things it gets the knight out of the center which is a dangerous area because a bunch of shiz is going to go down there and it also moves a knight to a position where it's attacking our bishop so that is why Black should only choose to capture the pawn on e4, this little maneuver from here to here to here, when we have a bishop on b5. So I know it's kind of a long chain, but whenever your knight is right here on f6 is black, you need to look out for a bishop on b5 because of this specific maneuver. Now, white has a couple different options here. They can retreat if they want to. However, what they typically do is they choose to capture on c6 now why is this why would you want to capture rather than retreating well if you retreat then you're going to lose the tempo and also another benefit of capturing is whenever black recaptures with either the b7 or d7 pawn they're going to ruin their pawn structure and i don't want to say ruin it i'll say weaken their pawn structure now the pawn that black typically chooses is actually capturing with the d pawn and that is because if they if i just take a step back here if we see they capture with their b pawn then instead of two pawn islands they actually have three and i'm not including this one right here because this one's going to be gobbled up eventually but after this exchange in the center if they capture with their b pawn black is essentially left with three pawn islands and that is why whenever you capture with the d pawn you have two pawn islands which is slightly better for black now on move number seven, what white is going to do is just go ahead and capture this pawn on e5. And now material is even, white has won back that pawn. And from here, since black does have their knight attack, what they're going to do is they're going to reposition it to the square f5. Again, a very great central square for this knight on f5. And at this point, we have a couple obvious moves. What white's going to want to do is just capture the queen on d8. And <laughs> it's pretty obvious what move black has just to recapture with the king. So this exact position is known as the Berlin Wall. And actually from this point, there are a bunch of different lines, a bunch of different variations in theory. But from this tutorial, I just wanted to cover the basic concepts of getting to this point. So if we kind of say, okay, now we're here let's go ahead and do an overall assessment of each side well for black it's not that bad i mean they have a knight in the center like i said controlling some valuable central squares they have a bishop pair which is great 
And yes, they do have an isolated pawn in the center, not one of their isolated pawns, but white has an isolated pawn in the center, which is a benefit for black. Now from white's point of view, okay, they did kind of um, weaken black's pawn structure, and also black's king is in the center of the board and they don't have any castling rights. So that could, or I don't want to say could, is definitely an advantage for white. So again, that is the overview and basic strategy behind the Berlin defense, specifically this position right here, which is called the Berlin Wall. As always, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you next video.